Hey, welcome back to The Recap, the video podcast ministry of First Baptist Kettering, where we discuss topics such as our vision, our values as a church, and our sermons from week to week. The Recap exists to present content that invites people to be transformed by Jesus. So with that, let's get started. Back at the table, the three of us hanging out, and today is a different day. This is a week where we're kind of between series. We're going from uh, our Inspire series, our Revive series, and now we're moving into Revelation coming next week. We're going to talk about that in just a second. But something happened different in both of our campuses this week. What happened? Tell me Tell me how that went this week. So David finished out the Revive series mm-hmm. by talking about prayer. Mm-hmm. And I preached the Inspire message, and then this week we are... Reversing it, and Patrick's going to be preaching the prayer message at Sugar Creek, and I'm going to be preaching the Inspire message at yeah. Eastmont. So it's going to be a great day. We're all over the place, is yeah. what you're saying. It's going to be fun. But it's, it's super, this this time of year is, is really fun anyway. You know, the weather's changing a little bit. We're feeling more like fall college football's mm-hmm. back. And, hey, why not change the schedule up a little bit keep people guessing? So here's what I wanted to ask. An Inspire service. Sometimes people wonder, what is that? What What is it for? What do we do during an Inspire service? So... I think it's worth explaining a little bit why we do an Inspire service on a Sunday morning. So what's the what, what would you say is the main purpose? The main purpose is because we are a congregational church, meaning that the decisions of the church are made by the people, by the members of the church. And what we mean by that is it's not that there's not structure or leadership or groups of people that make decisions, but... Ultimately, those leaders are in place because the congregation has placed them in those positions. So there's no like hierarchy in another city that mm-hmm. tells us what we do. Uh, we are an autonomous church that makes decisions locally within the body. So okay. every so often, for us it's quarterly, we have a quote-unquote members meeting, business mm-hmm. meeting. We call them Inspire Meetings. Look at all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, and we just talk about what's going on in the church mm-hmm. so that people understand what when, when they give, what that's going to, uh, who are the people that are connecting in membership, what's our mission and vision. We just lay out a lot of those things. Mm-hmm. We spend time praying. So uh, it really gives people an inside look and an inside track to participate in the decisions of the church. So, And whether they are members or guests, they get to see how we do things. Yeah. Right, and I, I always say, and I'll say it this Sunday at Eastmont, um, you know, if you're a guest with us, we're so glad you're here, but today's not your typical day. Right. I mean, we're still going to pray, we're still going to worship, I'm still going to preach a message from the Word, but you're going to see other aspects. It's kind of like being invited to a family reunion. Mm-hmm. You know, there, you're going you're gonna to see a lot of things and hear a lot of things that maybe at first glance feel like, I don't understand what they're mm-hmm. doing, uh, and that's okay, yep. right? I'm, I'm real clear up front that that's what we're doing. Uh, but it does also give outsiders a chance to see kind of what's under the hood of the car. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. How, how are those decisions made? Who is connecting with us? What do our finances look like? It's a way to be transparent with yeah. people. So I've heard it said before, and you know, we've I've been in the Baptist tradition pretty much my whole life, and you hear these uh, these folks say anytime you get some Baptists in the room and they start talking about numbers, the numbers inflate, mm-hmm. right? pastor sits at the table, how many do you have in, in worship? How many do you have in worship? What's your membership like? And it's not necessarily a question just about, we don't want to just present numbers because the numbers tell a, a story. They don't tell mm-hmm. the whole story, but they give a they give us a pretty good picture. So we want to include numbers in a service once in a while so folks can understand. Um, but that's not what we hope, that's not all we hope they get. All right, it's, mm-hmm. it's not so much about the budget or butts in the seats, but we really want to talk about what God is doing here and sometimes that's reflected in those things. So I think it's a really good, really good thing to kind of explain why we do that. It both fulfills, I would say, a, a requirement or a thing that we we have to do as a congregational church, but also uh, one of those things we we get to do. Mm-hmm. We get to share. I tell together. people we don't have, uh, and this has been refreshing for me for the last six years being at FBK because it's it's a it's a different way of doing business. Mm-hmm. When people ask me, do y'all have business meetings? Um, usually that's coming from somebody like yourself who mm-hmm. you know, you grew up in church. <laughs> Monthly. There's a negative connotation right. that goes along with business meetings. So I say we don't have business meetings, but we conduct business. And, and at these meetings that we and I talk about, we call it an Inspire meeting. Another thing that happens at a family reunion chat is 
you know, that's usually the big event where somebody will reveal that they're pregnant, they're having a baby, and they want the whole family you to got, know at the you same got news, time. David, you're gonna be <laughs> yeah, you're going to give us some We're news? not adopting. <laughs> all right, all right, just a second. But, but I mean, we had Stay to, tuned. Be there Sunday for David's big announcement. Well, no, but we're going to have two baptisms, we are, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so that, that's when it, you know, that's big. That's fun. That's exciting. That mm-hmm. ins- it's inspiring to, to see people. We mentioned the names of people who are new to the church, right? right? Yeah. So we're, we're going to have, what, 10 people that we're going to put up on the screen this week and great. across both campuses. So we're welcoming people to our faith family. We're seeing people trust Christ. We're seeing them go public mm-hmm. with their faith. What's more inspiring than that, right? When you see people joining together to be about God's mission and joining together to do it in, in our, our local church. So that's, that's pretty fantastic. So um, as, as you mentioned already, we talked about you both preached at different locations, a different message this week mm-hmm. instead of the same. So we're going to flip-flop that this week. But I wanted to ask a question about the Ephesians 6 passage okay. um, that you preached. And we, we had some dialogue about this mm-hmm. before you preached this Sunday. Um, and then we, you know, we've kind of gone through some stuff this, this week. It's been an interesting season getting ready for this Sunday. Um, the picture in Ephesians 6 that, that is there for us from Paul is, is preparing for warfare, mm-hmm. right? So walk me through... Um, or walk all of us through this idea of spiritual warfare and how do we prepare for that? Do we, do we feel we're in the midst of that now? Have you seen that maybe played out? How did that come to bear on your message this Sunday? Well, I, I really felt like when he gets to the end of this letter to the church at Ephesus, he says, finally, brothers, mm-hmm. okay, so you know, okay, he's, he's bringing this to a close, all the stuff that he's talked about is so very important, and he and he wants them to know that the best way to stand firm mm-hmm. is by putting on the armor of God. Mm-hmm. And he ends that little section by saying those words um, in verse 18, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. Uh, and mm-hmm. then he starts talking about these elements of prayer. I called it the art of prayer, mm-hmm. right? And uh, I kind of get into that kind of stuff. And uh, my brother gave me a copy, that old school copy of the art of war by Sun Tzu. And um, I just use that as an illustration because I think it's interesting. He begins that that ancient classic book on warfare with you. Um, Sun Tzu talks about all these different numbers of troops you need and numbers of chariots you need, the number of swords you need and spears mm-hmm. you need. And he, and he gives all these specifics, and it's very different. <laughs> it's the antithesis of what the Apostle mm-hmm. Paul mm-hmm. says. He's like, no, you need to get on your The best way to stand is to get on your knees. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And that's one of our measures, you know, being knee benders. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and so just, and what does it look like? What does the art of prayer yeah. look like? And and so I just kind of walked through these just two verses. And, you know, it's seven points. Everybody's like, he's going to be preaching for an hour and a half. <laughs> a, long, a long Patrick sermon. Come on, man. Here we go. This is, there it is. It <laughs> doesn't it really matter. Wasn't, it wasn't that long. But it was, it, it's just so relevant for us today. And when you think about the paganism that the mm-hmm. church at Ephesus dealt with, in that day, I kind of started by giving a little context mm-hmm. of, of um, the city that this church was located in. Not only was there pagan worship taking place just outside the gates of Ephesus, there was uh, I mean, a big synagogue. And so Judaism, so that the attacks that this little church, this little Christian church, it was coming from every direction. Right. And the Apostle Paul saying, you've got to stand. You've got to stand as a, as a Christ follower. You've mm-hmm. got to stand, and here's how you do it. Mm-hmm. And, and he talks about prayer. So yeah. it was it was a good time, and we had a lot to pray about this week. I think it's easy for folks in the midst of everything that goes on in our life to to identify where the attacks come from, mm-hmm. and we we can get distracted and and say, "Man, our enemy is is my neighbor next door or my my family member," instead of recognizing that this. There are so many. There, it's such a deeper sense of of battle that we mm-hmm. go through. As believers, it's not just physical. It's not flesh and blood, right? We wrestle against mm-hmm. the powers of principalities, mm-hmm. and it's a spiritual battle for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this is a great way to understand how to be equipped for that. So with that, now we're, we're moving from our Revive series and Inspire series into a new series coming in, in two Sundays. So let's preview that a little bit. What do we have to look forward to? We are doing a series through the uh, seven... Churches of Revelation, the oh, seven letters, yeah. the seven churches in the first uh, few chapters of the book of Revelation. And so it's going to be an exciting time. I think it's going to be a, a uh, learning time. We're going to learn some things about uh, the church. We're going to learn some things about ourselves. Mm-hmm. We're going to hear some warnings 
uh, mm-hmm. that Jesus gave to the churches about what not to do and what not to, to uh, be about. And then he's going to give some encouraging things. And I think we can learn from both of those to stay mm-hmm. away from mm-hmm. certain things and then to pursue certain things. And so now, I'm excited about that. And we're not going to chart and graph things. No Revelation charting and graphing. So you can leave your diagrams and your timelines at home. Right. Uh, we're really just going to dig into the meat of the letters that, uh, were written to the churches mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Well, fantastic. Well, guys, are looking forward to it as always. Thank you so much for joining us for the recap this week. Whether you join us in person or online for worship, we want to thank you for joining us as well. If you're watching this video, look down below, smash that subscribe and like button for us so you can keep up with this content that gets delivered every week. Thank you again for joining us. Let's go out and continue to be the church. <laughs>